let's have a look at different possible trading strategies. Okay, again, guys, remember that before you place any trade, you have to fully understand all possible outcomes of it, okay? You invest your own money, and you have to make your own decision, and don't rely on anyone's opinion, okay? So whatever you put opinions right now, so uh, that's your opinion, remember. But again, we're going to break it to a few strategies for long-term investors who buy and hold. And uh, so if you can buy it at 47.50 if you distinguish that price, you can buy at 49, like uh, Gina uh, said, like 51, whatever level you uh, can choose, and then hold until 95, 115, or even higher, because I made a mistake in calculations, Gina pointed out, and uh, you can hold that. So possible waiting period, when they implement the online sales, improve it, when they have fully transaction and they go back to the same level of flawless credit sales, it might take a year, right? Maybe two years, okay? When people uh, become confident with that company again, it has to uh, pass through fewer returns, okay? They have to see dynamic on that. And uh, then the price can go there. So it can give you 100 plus returns, plus dividends, whatever you receive during that time. Good in income, fantastic. I think it's possible now, but at the same time, it can be some way going up and down, going up and down. It depends on the market because remember, if the market in general starts going down, it will affect prices of all companies. Now, uh, this prediction is based on the fact that market is not going to crash. Okay, something like that. Now, the number one is raw strategy: uh, buy and sell using technical analysis. So, buy shares and sell. I presume because the uh, company is making these three to five rolls even right now. So if you go for this type of rolls, so here's 49 bucks, here's 54 bucks somewhere, right? So, uh, so it's about $5, up to $5, maybe a bit less you play. So, but you can make up to 10% on a roll. How often does it happen? So it's 24th of November. That's the price 30th of November. That's so one week up, one week down. One week up, one week down. So you can make this 10% rolls practically every week. Yes, you would have to spend more time on the market, but your profitability may be higher as well. Okay, so that's kind of uh, thing. Now, and then we have option strategies. So, and like BR strategy. So you buy shares and rent them out. So sell cover call. Then you can, what Gina offered, sell naked puts. Or you can buy and sell leap call options, or you can can do some kind of uh, spread, bull put, bull put spreads, bull call spreads, uh, whatever. If you know how to do that, you can do that too. So let's have a look at some of these strategies, how you can make it. So option strategy, uh, BR strategy, buy shares and sell cover calls. So rent them out. Uh, I took three strike prices. And um, I looked at expiration date in January 2018, 19th of January 2018, it's 38 days. The price when I did, did the screenshot, it was in the morning, so it's $52.76. Now remember, we already assumed that we are going to buy shares at much lower levels than right now. And uh, that's the usual thing to do. So when you trade in calls, you buy and selling. So the way you do it, is uh, you buy shares here, you sell covered call here. Then when it goes down, you buy that call again, you exit the position. When it goes up again, you can sell the call again. Do you understand how it works, right? So, and, uh, but at the moment, we are going to look if we buy it and sell it instantly, how much we're going to make, okay? So if we don't do this uh, more advanced kind of you know, trading activity. So, okay, uh, that's what we can get. So if we sell $50 strike, we're going to get $4.8, but we're going to sell less than we paid for the share. So we paid $52.76, we're going to sell at 50. So we're going to lose $2.76, correct? If they sell, if the shares will be taken from us. So, but because we received $4.8, we're still going to get how much in profit? What would be time value? Who can calculate it? How much our profit will be on that trade from time value perspective? Mm 
No, not 224, Dory. We are going to get $4.8, not $5. So 4.8 minus 2.76, 204, correct, Gina? Because remember, Dory, we're not getting five bucks. We're getting only $4.8. Okay, so, but still, $2, if you take $2, okay, and uh, if it exercises 3.7%, still good, right? And at the same time, you bring in your break even to 47.97. That's the level which you guys, like quite few of them, pointed. So you put 47.50. Okay, it's quite not there yet, but very very close. So you bring in your break even price to 47.97. So the share price has to go nearly what 10% down before you start making a loss. So that would be a very conservative strike price. But still, 3.7% in 39 days. If you do it uh, every month, this percentage is about 36% annual return. Good or good? Okay, something like that. If the share price went below $50, your shares are not going to be taken from you. Okay, but you generated 9% in cash. Okay, and uh, then you just have to sell another call for another month. Okay, that's what you do. Now, if you use $55 strike price, you get $2.3. That gives you a 4.4% return in cash. But if the share price moves up above $55, you're going to make extra on the buy and sell because you buy at $52.76, sell at $55. So in total, you're going to uh, return 8.6%. And if you're really aggressive and really believe that people are going to start buying this company this month and it's going to move above $60, you can get 85 cents uh, as a rent, which gives you 1.5%. Still good, okay, better than banks. So it gives you about 15% return annually. But if the share price goes all the way up above 60, it's going to give you 15% return. So which is very juicy and if you do it every month so it gives you 146 per turn return uh, annually okay so that's covered calls guys is it all clear about covered calls okay fantastic okay let's have a look at puts puts remember it's other side uh, of this uh, chain option chain so the way you do it i actually took four strike prices here really really conservative 45 dollars 50 55 and 60 so let's start from 45 when you sell 45 dollar strike you kind of promise somebody that you're going to buy that share at 45 dollar level if they decide to sell it to you so it means that if the share price never goes above below 45 you don't have to buy. You just keep this money, 70 cents. Okay, that's what you're going to receive. But if the share price stays, goes below $45, you would have to buy $45. Okay, that's your risk. So that's why you sell puts only when you're happy to have the share, when you're happy to hold that share. Okay, so that's what you sell. And uh, like some of you told that it's between $47. 47.50. So if you go for really, really conservative strike price, 45, and you get 70 cents, it actually gives you 1.5% return. That if you use margin, because you, like in Australia, we cannot use margin, guys. Sorry, uh, forget about this part. Okay, so, but you, you get 1.5% uh, return here, which gives you 14% return annually. And it's really conservative. The share price has to collapse, what, $7 on the 52, so it's nearly 15% it has to go down uh, before you start make, you know, losing money. Okay. Now, uh, if you do $50 strike, you collect $1.95, and uh, it's all time value, which gives you 3.9% return. Okay, and uh, your average price, if you decide to buy the chair, it's going to be $48.18. And previous one, it was 44, 43. That's including commission, which you have to pay. So if you do strike price 55, uh, you're going to get 
and you break even, so your kind of average buying price of the share would be $50.73. Because even if you buy it at 55, you already receive 4.4. It means reality, in reality, the share costs for you only $50.60 minus commission, yeah, about $50.73. And then again, if you go even for $60, so you become really, really aggressive, you can get $8. But in this particular case, uh, your break-even price, your price of the share, fifty-two dollars thirteen cents, and now it's seventy cents. So you're actually saving only sixty cents. Um, Jonas, you probably won't be able to do that uh, because if you're in Australia, I, I know you could probably register it from Germany, and uh, in this case, it's easier for you. You would be able to uh, use margin to do that. Uh, in Australia, they just won't let you do that. If you registered your account as resident of uh, Australia, you're not going to probably get it with Interactive Broker. They don't provide margin. At least they don't provide for me. Oh, fantastic, you can. So in this case, there definitely you can use a margin. And uh, quite often, but be careful, okay, Jonas. I'll, I'll explain how it works. So for example, imagine that you, you decided to do 10 contracts of this specific share. Okay. Or oh, you couldn't. Dory, you couldn't. Okay. Jonas, you, can, you, you could. Okay. Maybe just ask. Maybe I know that Interactive Broker. Jonas, do you use Interactive Broker or you use another broker? You use an Interactive Broker, right? ID. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Because I cannot do I, I cannot sell margin. Yeah, maybe uh, did you open like German guy or like Australian guy? In Australia. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Because I, I, I can do it and majority of people can. You're lucky one. Okay, they, they kind of miss, missed you. Okay, use it while we can. And probably you can trade currency, right? As well, Jonas. Can you trade currency? Oh yeah, you see, no, definitely. It looks like you're not registered for Australia. Check it out. Uh, check where your office is located, probably it's somewhere else. Probably you showed them your uh, German passport and they registered you as, a, as in German, maybe something like that, because Europeans, they all get this stuff. But it's good, okay, whatever happens, happens to the best. But in any case, uh, if you use broker, which provides the margin facilities, uh, the way it works like that. So instead of, because when you promise somebody that you're going to pay $50, you have to have this $50 on your account, right? But in reality, with puts broker quite often, uh, different brokers for different shares, it could be different volume, but in general, it's about 30%, 30 to 50%. So it means that you have to have only about 15 to maybe 25,000 on your account. Okay, so in this case, your rate of return is much higher. That's what was here. Okay, so it was twice as much here because uh, based on that specific um, margin facility, which this broker provided where I got this table, uh, it was 3.1%, not 1.5 because you kind of use margin facilities. Now, the risk here is what? Uh, the risk here that if you used only 30%, and funny enough, because when you use put, they give you, you have to have 30% of the total amount which you have to purchase for, like for. But if, if you buy shares, you have to have at least 50%, definitely. They wouldn't give you only 30% margin. So, and you become, like short with money, and they call it margin call. They will start selling your shares in the worst case uh, kind of position, okay, in this particular case. Now the question is, what can you do in this particular case? So what do you do if, assuming that you sold put for December, which ends uh, in three days, okay, and you, for example, sold $55 uh, call or put, sorry, and you receive whatever money you receive. For example, you got $2 for that previously. What can you do now if you don't want to buy shares at 
and still be in profit. What can you do, guys? Correct, Dory. You can roll it to the next month. Uh, guys, can you put pluses who knows how to roll and minuses who don't know how to roll? Okay, uh, Mick doesn't know. Okay, perfect, Dory doesn't know. Okay, I'll explain it. So, for example, last month we sold $55 put. So, we promised what we're going to buy shares of Signet uh, for $55. And we received $2. Now share price is 52.76, and we in three days would have to buy those shares. But for whatever reason, for example, we don't have cash on our account, or we don't want to buy those shares. Okay, so what we can do? So one simple option: we can buy put back with a loss. So because we sold it at two dollars, we are going to buy it at two dollars sixty, and we have sixty cents loss. And then that's it. So you exited this position. You exit this trade with a loss of 60 cents. It's one option. But the second option, which called rollover, uh, what you do, you buy it at $2.60 and instantly, it's actually done within one trade. So you put it as a one trade, okay? So you buy it at $2.60 and you instantly, you see 55, instantly selling for the next month. So you pay $2.60 and you received $4.40. So what's your profit here? How much you collect in credit? Who calculated it? 1.8, what percentage is that? 1.8 divided by 55, it gives us what? 3.2%, 3.3%. So you kind of, move forward your obligation in this particular case. Now, when you create this sale, you actually put it as one trade. You put buy that, close that position, open new position, and you put the credit which you want to receive. And because here 20 cents spread, here you can see um, what, 25 cents spread. You can bargain, maybe you get more, not 180. You, you might get 190 or maybe $2. If it moves a bit higher, uh, you will get more money. Okay. Do you get how to do it? Do you understand? I, I'm going to actually, uh, this Friday, I'm going to record how to do that. I'm going actually to show how to create this trade uh, in the last day. Usually, it is better to do during the last day. Yeah, that's what I am waiting because it has to be done during the last day. Of course, I can record it tonight, but it won't show the exact amount which you can get because the best time to do in the last day. Who can tell me why is it, it is the best time to do in the last day? No time value, correct, Dory? Absolutely, there is no time value. There is one exception, though. There is one exception, though. So, because, uh, for example, if we go back to technicals, if we sell $55 call, or put, sorry, it's much better to roll on the top. So, for example, if you look, uh, for example, if it, in two days' time the share price is going to be here of Signet, we're not going to get $1.80 credit. Even the time value will evaporate we will get only one dollar maybe. So sometimes it is better to roll it earlier at this particular case, okay, because we can get 180. Because when it drops down, we're not going to get more. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the tricky thing about uh, rolling. But sometimes you need to do it definitely in the last week and uh, trying to roll it when it is at resistance. Okay. Okay. So guys, put pluses if you're all clear about selling puts. Okay, fantastic, great. And another one is uh, leap call options because some guys I know you buy and leap call options. Uh, remember when you buy leap call options, uh, okay, I, I'll ask you questions like that. So you buy options when volatility is high, implied volatility is high, or implied volatility is low? 
If you can't answer, put minus. You don't know. Correct. Low. So when the volatility is high and the share price moves up and down, there would be a lot of option traders there. And the option would be high. So in this case, when something high, if the price is high, we sell. We make money on sell. If nobody trades at this particular moment, volatility, implied volatility, so the expected volatility is low, usually the option premium is low, that's where you would buy it. And it doesn't really matter if you buy calls or if you buy lead puts, you need to buy it when volatility is low. Uh, you buy calls at support, you buy puts at resistance, okay? And you always have to look. And uh, for example, if we look at here, the implied volatility is three, it's really high. Like uh, in some accounts, for whatever reasons, 30 would be, in my, it's, I don't know, three. And uh, usually I buy leads when the volatility is less than one. Okay, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, sometimes up to 1.5, but really, really seldom. I try to, avoid. when I see something like that, I never buy, I usually sell. And for example, if I decide to buy a call, that's for January 2019 or July 2018, so 220 days or 400 days. So at least six months or more, the longer the better. But look at this. If I go and buy, let's say, $55 strike price, I have to pay $9.20. It's like nearly, what, 18% extra I have to pay for the call. It's really bad price. I mean, to buy a really bad price. Why? Because uh, if volatility goes down, share price might stay the same way, but the volatility goes down, you might lose 50% of that call. It might become like $4 call only. Because volatility right now is high, it's all high in price. Okay, so that's why this specific strategy for this specific share at this particular time is not definitely working. So it's it's not worth. Even though if you, for example, buy this leap and the share price might move up, but the volatility drops down, you will see the share price, like the volume, the price of the option would be exactly the same. So it's not good. Okay, that's call options. 